الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليم كثيرا. We're in video four of five in this set A of the theoretical background of navigating through the Hansvere Dictionary. This is Imam Hanif. So far we've discussed the additions to the three-letter root verb, the ones that we're going to have to take away if we want to get to that root verb. And we said that that's essential in trying to use the Hansware Dictionary. And we said that the general letters that will be added to a word are, or the three-letter root verb are the three letters of elongation, being alif, wow, and ya, yeah. meme, regardless of whether it has a feta, a bumma, or a kesra, but that it will usually be at the beginning of a word, and the ta, whether it's the ta al-maftuha, the open ta, or the ta marbuta, which is the closed ta, which usually comes, or which does come, at the end of a word. So now we want to start looking at the dictionary itself, and just getting familiar with some of the elements that we will see inside of the dictionary. So if we look at this caption or picture of the dictionary here on the left, what we want to notice is, is that any time we're looking for an entry, we're always, as the author has mentioned us, going to begin with the three-letter root verb. So if we come here at the top, we're going to begin with Sahara, which is the verb. The verb starts it, and you're going to keep going through that verb until you get to the end of that section. Now, you're going to know that you're dealing with the verb usually because you're also going to see these Roman numerals. Do not worry about what that means right now. We'll discuss that, inshallah, if we get to uh, book two and we get to level 2A, 2B, 2C. We'll begin to deal with those Roman numerals. But as for now, <clears throat> when you see those Roman numerals, you see that first entry, you're dealing with the verb. Okay? Everything beyond this point, beyond that verb, everything else is an ism. Now, what you also want to keep in mind is because this was written by Orientalists, which are non-Muslims who are trying to uh, go through Arabic text, uh, Quran and Sunnah, and trying to find evidence against Islam to support Christianity and the conversion of Muslims, then even the way they approach uh, the diacritical marks or the vowel, the harakat, uh, is a bit different. So you see this entry here, and there are absolutely no harakat on it. Well, when you look next to the letter, or next to the word, excuse me, when you see those vowels, what they want you to understand is that those vowels are representative of the harakat. So each time you say this, you see this A, and there's nothing on that A, then you know that that is just a fatha. So this is fatha, 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 so sahara. Then you see an A here, and that next letter shows you what the vowel sound will be on the present tense. So we haven't studied present tense, and we won't study present tense until we get to book number two, so I'd rather just leave that right now. Then they're sometimes going to give you the, uh, the noun or the gerund, uh, the noun form of that verb, which here, the I represents a kesra. Okay, and because there's no vowel between the H and the R, which represents the Ha and the Ra, then we know that on the H is a Sukun, or on the Ha is a Sukun. So we would pronounce that Sihrun. So here, we said we finished the verb here, and everything else underneath is now an Ism. So here we have Fatha Fatha, but this is not the verb. This is the Ism. So this is Saharun. And then next to it, we have, or you were, they're also telling us we can pronounce this suhrun. So that means there would be a dhamma on the seen and a sukun on the ha, as there's no vowel between the H and the R. So this could be saharun, or this could also be suhrun. Here, we see an extra mark, which is that elongation sign there above the U. So that represents the dhamma and the elongation with the wow. So that shows us that we would pronounce this suhur. The first U represents a dhamma on the scene, and the second U represents a dhamma on the ha, and then the wow elongates that. 
Here we've already seen Sihr, which was here at the top. And then here again we have Suhur, which is the same as we had here. Here we have Ashar. Again, we see that there's a Fatah on that Hamza there. And then the scene. And then we have the Ha. And after the Ha on the Ha is a Fatah. Then that's elongated by the Aleph. So we pronounce that Ashar. And so on. Uh, we'll look at one more example. Here we have Sihri. So that means the I means there's a Kesra on the scene. Then there's no vowel between the H and the R, which means there's a Sukun on the Ha. And then after the R, we see an I with the elongation. That indicates there's a Kesra that's been elongated. So we will pronounce that Sihri. And so that's how you match between the letters and the vowel sound. So again, your first entry is going to be a verb or a fi'l. We're going to use those vowels, the A, the I, and the U, to represent fathas, kesras, and dhammas. And then when we see that line there on top, as we see here, on top of the A or on top of the U, that's or on top of the uh, on, uh, on top of the I, that's an indication of an elongation with the elongation letters, which are wow, ya, and uh, aleph, respectively.